Hello, hello, everyone. It's Darren M. Palmer, Chief Book Officer with Self Publishing 30 Days with my lovely co host, Carolyn Flower, founder and CEO of Oxygen Publishing. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're excited to be with you again for another episode of Desire to Inspire. Carolyn, we're going to pass it off. You know, I'm a Southern gentleman or whatnot, so we're going to let ladies go first. What you want to share with the people today, young lady? Today, I'm inspired by uh, some, some people that reached out to me earlier on this morning. And, you know, you and I don't ever plan these calls. We just kind of go with the flow of the energy that comes to us. And this morning, I had a number of people reach out and they have this desire to inspire the next generation of readers and thinkers. And so today, I think I just want to touch on how powerful it is to take that children's book story out of your head and to get it out on to paper. And I think for a lot of people, they, they think of this, I want to write a children's book. Yeah, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's just, it's not like writing a nonfiction book or a memoir or something that they think is far grandiose than to write that children's book. But here's the thing you got to understand the power at the level of the inspiration that you're delivering. Think of how you can impact the thinking and the language and the feelings of little ones and their minds and their moms and dads and the family. Think of your book in the hands of a, of a young child or whatever age child, young person, and think of how you could actually change the course of their thinking and their life and how they, you know, bullying a topic, for example, think about what you could bring to their life that would change the way they feel about how they go to school every day. And I think we underestimate the power that we have to inspire little lives. I love it. I love it. And, you know, and Carolyn, just to piggyback off what you just shared, uh, when those who are out there, when you think about the legacy piece, yes, yes, you know, it's great to think about just your family alone and other things I think you need, you know, charity starts at home, but also what Carolyn is sharing with us, the importance of generations. Um, I can't tell you how, how many of us who've been able to read uh, Moby Dick or whatnot, or Alex Haley Roots, uh, these are things that outlast the individual. Let's even look at something. One of my favorites growing up is the Bernstein Bears. And now all of a sudden I look up and even, you know, my youngest son, who's five years old right now, um, he's reading that type of material as well. So when you look at that, it, it also brings a connection um, for families because yes. you're like when I was in kindergarten or when I was in grade school or whatever that looked like, then I read that book too as well. So it allows for you to be able to bond and you're bringing families together and individuals together with something that they have in common that's common ground. And Lord knows that we need that in today's world. Um, but also you're able to expand the minds of those who are being able to receive and digest the materials that you're sharing. But I also wanna go back to a point that you brought up earlier, Carolyn, of those who don't take it lightly mm because it is a children's book. I know um, with our company, we have to make sure that we share that with individuals because like you brought up, they think, well, it's not a, a 250 uh, page uh, nonfiction book or whatnot, or it's not a business book, or they take it as this, Carolyn, you might've experienced this as well, but we have people come in and they'll say, well, I just wanna get started. I don't know if I can do a full-fledged book. I know I have this other book in me, but just to get started as an appetizer, so to speak, or just to dip my toe in the water, just to get it wet, I want to go ahead and just do a children's book. But I want to put this on your mind. It can actually be more of a daunting task to do a children's book than it is for you just to do a nonfiction book. Because when you start looking at the design and the images of the book, when you start looking at the copy and the content that you're creating, and that is something that most people don't understand. And I don't want to have an elephant in a room. Let's also look at the investment, the monetary investment that it is. 
to get yours because you're dealing with the illustrations and how yeah. do you work with the illustrators and the whole nine to have print ready files. So just don't take it lightly for those who come out there because sometimes we have to burst some people uh, bubbles when we have initial assessment. I mean, we have a strategy call with them is because they go in with the mindset that, oh, that's nothing. It's a piece of cake just to be able to do a children's book. I didn't know, Carolyn, did you want to add on to that or did you want to shift the conversation? Well, I know that the clients that we've worked with in our children's division, we we often have that exact conversation, right? Because part of what we do with, with our clients is, is what we call a, a scene-by-scene storyboard. So most children's book aspiring authors don't think of their story as a scene by scene. They mu- It must be scene by scene because we need to be able to bring in an illustrator that can actually draw what's in each scene. So that is actually quite a task because when you're writing a book, any book, you know, you, you write it chapter and, you, and, and, and all of this text flows chapter by chapter. But when you're, when you're breaking down scene by scene of this story that's in your head, you also have to be uh, responsible for communicating to an illustrator. What are the actions that have to go into each one of those scenes? And so every time we work with a children's author, at the end of that strategy, what strategy call or onboarding, and when we get started, they go, wow, there's, there's a little more than I thought here that I have to think about because it's, it is a completely different landscape. And yes, there's investment in all of it, but bringing in an illustrator, finding that match, because you know there's millions of talented illustrators out there, but they all have different styles. They all have different, you know, they communicate through imagery differently. So we try as best we can to match the style that the author may not even know they have yet. So there's there is a lot that goes into it. But here's part of the satisfaction I feel, and you probably can relate to this as well, because you know, you're a, a father of, of children, I'm the mother of children, the legacy joy that I feel helping each client navigate through this journey, I get to remember every single story that my children sat with us on our laps and read all through their childhood. So, you know, selfishly, I get to relive my children's childhood because more than ever, we we want to encourage our families to just sit with the written word, just have lap time with mom and dad. It's not screen time. There's still time to do all of that. We can still encourage that kind of interaction with the language and the story and questions and answers and addressing things in our world that, you know, maybe we're there when you and I were children, but they're, they're new now and our children need guidance in that way. So what better way not only to read books but the best book that you're going to read in 2021 is the book you're going to write we want you to write those books that are in your head and one of my favorite books um, that we used to read to our kids was one of dr seuss's books which is oh the places you'll go oh yeah you know and what an inspiring book and in its simplicity, it's so, so uh, message driven and inspirational. And like we got other Dr. Seuss writers out there. Get that stuff out of your head, inspire a child, inspire a family. So I'm pretty passionate about that part of our business. And I know you have a children's division as well. Um, just understanding the power of your children's book story and, and really take, taking the time to give it credence and, and get some information on how you can actually do that. You know what, I, um, when you're bringing this up, Carolyn, just keep in mind for those who are tuned into this, make sure that you get that this is something that's gonna resonate, that's gonna be the next Senator, it could be the next prime minister. This could be someone over the next Fortune 500 or 100 company. This is someone who's a local architect or someone who's going to be over uh, construction projects that you're dealing with. The next teacher, the next writer themselves. And it starts with something that happens at such an early age or whatnot, as far as the possibilities, the creativity, allowing that to flow through someone that they don't even know what's being embedded in them. But at the same time, it's positivity that's cryptic, that's placed inside of them, that allow for them to understand the true energy, the true power that they actually have within them, and not to be held up by all the 
the, the, the crud and all the negativity that's out there or whatnot to tell them who they aren't instead of focusing on who they are, the I am, that I am, that I am. That possibility there is something that I want for those to listen to as well. And I believe that for you to be able to create this content, before you to do the things that we alluded to earlier, yes, it's important. Yes, it's legacy. Yeah, I, I shared the investment piece, the investment of time. And the reason I bring that up, because I think so many times that we can get so, I like to say it, in the woo-woo of just write your books and then people get into it and they're like, oh, oh, it's like somebody shocked them. Like if for a person who want to be in a committed relationship and you say the C word for his commitment and they're like, oh, I was here for a good time. Now you said the C word, eh, that's how I don't want to deal with that. And you would think, don't you know that? But I realized being a Southern gentleman myself, my grandmother would share, daring common sense isn't so common. Correct. So that's why I go ahead and bring that about. And I'm bringing this out right now is because Carolyn has did a great job of eloquently sharing with us the why. This is what we're talking about here. When we talk about that next person who's running city hall, the next mayor or the next mother or the next father of a next generation, this is these are the things that you gotta keep in mind because now you have servant leadership happening. Now you have a big enough why. So when you run into a hurdle and when you gotta think about the scene by scene things and you gotta use your mind and go places that you haven't been in years for some of us and with a childlike faith and creativity, now you're thinking to yourself, I can push through this because I know that this will outlive me and continue to make a positive impact. So that's why I'm bringing all these up and letting Carolyn share her part and I'm sharing my part as well because we want you to know, have that big enough why? Because if you won't do it for you, do it for that child that needs you. Share that expertise for that family who might be going through a trying time, but they were all able to be enlightened and empowered by what you shared through your power of your story or whatnot. You know, Carolyn, any last words, anything you want to share with our audience on this before we close it out? If anything, it's just to embrace this idea of what I call slowing down to speed up. You know, so often we are in such a hurry, right? And we think busy is the way to be. Busy, busy. I, I've been there. I, you know, I've, I've raised my family. They're all grown up and on, all on their own. And, and, and I remember those days where we were very, very busy. Um, but, you know, investing time. This is not about spending time with your children. This is investment of time. Investments produce dividends. They yield dividends. What are the dividends of your investment? Well, when your kids are grown like mine and there's grandkids that come along and, and they say, where's that book? You know that book that we used to always read and I remember you used to sit in this chair in this room and in, in my room in that rocking chair and we used to, and then they have these memories of these books and you don't even really know how that, those memories that were locked up inside their head, but when it comes time for their children to read books, these memories come up and you realize all those evenings, nights, story time with your kids that kind of pass through your family's life, maybe over years like a blur, they actually had an impact. And the lessons from those books will change your children's perspective. It'll change their ability to deal with life head on as it comes on. So be the change for those kids. Now, write the book that you believe the next generation of kids need to read. And speaking of that, uh, preparing them for the world, I, I've been able to watch with our clients and even others who aren't that I, I see that they're making a change for those entrepreneurs out there. And I know that there's been so many who have shared, even, you know, me too, I'm a part of the bandwagon. I got to, you know, just tell the truth right now, be totally transparent of some of the things that's not being taught at our local schools yeah. or our independent school districts or parishes, depending on where you are in the world. But you look at it, I've watched a shift happen where people are sharing in story and with characters through children's books, the importance of entrepreneurship, uh, financial literacy, uh, being able to deal with diversity and inclusion, um, understanding the, the bonus parent situation of things not going at how to handle these things and to work through situations in life. And more, more, and more than ever in a, in a period that we're in, 
we're seeing that the more you're able to be solution oriented yeah. and to be able to work with people from different backgrounds, no matter where they are on a socioeconomic ladder, no matter what their ethnicity is, their sexual orientation, the people who will really win big are the people who are able to know how to walk that thin line, who's able to be empathetic, able to understand, know how the, the thought process, if I understand and have clarity about, I just had a meeting, I'm just gonna share this real quick. I was able to connect with someone on Clubhouse because I was versed in an understanding of their country or in the area that they grew up in. So because I had that connection and I had studied to learn more about them, then it definitely created instant rapport where I was able to create a relationship because it was something that was unexpected, but they were appreciative of it because it was a sign of respect. So when you understand that and know how to work with all people, no matter whether their political affiliations are, no matter what time it is in a year or what area, that allows for you to be an outlier. And we're coming into a marketplace right now, like you see here with me and Carolyn, when you understand each other and the power of awareness, and then you start operating with that abundant mindset and you understand to be in the right flow and the right vibration, there's no cap on you. You won't have to worry about robots taking you out. You won't have to worry about security. You won't have to deal with none of that because you're vibrating and understanding at a higher level. And you don't have to worry about lack of opportunity, right? I mean, opportunity finds you. We don't have to know the how. I mean, we could do a whole show just on that, right? We just have to know what we want and how and and the, and the path forward becomes apparent and the opportunities jump onto our onto our path so you know if you're in that frequency and that energy and you're always taking action and you're always in that those good feeling grateful place opportunities find you so you know you and i are collaborating on uh, on something that a lot of people would feel should be competitive and it, and it's there's no such thing in an abundant mindset as competition Exactly. So that's how opportunities for us to collaborate, to grow what we do, to grow how, you know, we can impact uh, and help other people and serve other people. It just, it just grows from grows. there. So desire to inspire, it's all about, we're having this conversation about books and, and brands and business and beyond that, the desire to inspire period, right? There you go. There you go. And speaking of that, with those B words, you got a beautiful co-host like this inside and out. Who wouldn't show up for an episode like this? I'm oh, a blessed man, y'all. So I, you know, got a great person. Other gentleman, you are. Yeah, that's what. That's what I'm saying. We. I mean, how can you see? I'm telling you, overflow. You see the abundant life I'm living right now. So that's what I'm talking about. So you know, Carla, could you please share with them how they can connect with you if they're thinking about getting their children's book and they want to work with your department or whatnot? Share with them how they can connect with you and your team. Yeah, sure. You can go to oxygenpublishing.com. You can go to children's books. Click there. There's a questionnaire. It's going to ask you some questions. You're going to feel inspired just by reading what it is that you might be about to take on for the next generation of, of readers and learners. So uh, certainly I'm, I'm on social media under Carolyn Flower, oxygenpublishing.com. I look forward to speaking with you. Awesome. Awesome. And if you want to work with our company, we look forward to connecting with you at self-published the letter in 30 days.com. Or you can find us on all social media platforms as self-published the letter in 30 days. So, hey, this was another episode of Desire to Inspire. Remember, if you won't change, be the change. Mm. You got Always any last words, All right, then. We'll see y'all next time. Bye for now. <laughs>